today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the skeletal system. Yay, our first system. So we're just going to do a brief overview and talk about the gross anatomy of bones, how bones are classified, and their basic functions. So let's get started. All right, so in talking about the skeleton, we typically divide the skeleton into two major parts, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. So the word axial comes from the root word axis, which just means the invisible straight line running down the midline of the body from the top of your head to between your teeth. So the axial skeleton consists of all the bones that line up right along the middle. So that would be your skull and your vertebrae down your spine. So those are the only two components of the axial skeleton. All other parts of your body are part of the appendicular skeleton. So that includes the shoulder girdle and the arm, which the shoulder girdle attaches, and the hip girdle uh, and the leg to which that attaches. Next, we're going to classify bones based on their shape. So there are four major categories that these bones can fit into. There's long, short, flat, and irregular. So long bones are pretty self-explanatory. They're basically just longer than they are wide. For example, you have your humerus, which is your upper arm bone right here, your radius and ulna in your um, lower arm. You have your leg bones, basically all the bones in your limbs, even your tiny little finger bones. Even though they're pretty short compared to your longer bones, they're still longer than they are wide, so we've classified them as long bones. So the next category of bones are short bones, which are about the same length and width, so they look like little cubes. And some good examples of these are in your wrists um, and your ankles, so your carpals and your tarsals. And a specific subcategory of short bones are called sesamoid bones, which sounds like sesame, like sesame seeds. Um, and that's because they're little tiny round bones that specifically form in tendons. And the interesting thing about these is that not everyone actually has the exact same set of bones. Some people have like a few more or a few less bones than others, and these are typically results of variations in sesamoid bones. So a set of sesamoid bones that everyone has are the patella, which are your kneecaps. Um, your kneecaps are actually completely encased in the patellar tendon, and all sesamoid bones form in tendons. But you may have other bones like um, between larger bones of the skull, uh, tiny little bones may form in those tendons, and those are called sesamoid bones. The third category are flat bones. Uh, flat bones are also pretty self-explanatory. They're like two, two edges kind of um, sandwiching spongy bone in the middle. Classic examples of flat bones include the bones in your cranium um, and your sternum and scapula. Lastly, we have irregular bones, which are just kind of oddly shaped and they don't fit cleanly into any of the other um, categories. So some examples of irregular bones are your hip bone, um, which is like this very strange three-dimensional shape. We'll experience uh, what that looks like later. And the tiny little bones in your ear, your um, auditory ossicles. So here are some functions of the skeletal system. Uh, we have five major functions that we talk about. Support and protection are pretty self-explanatory. They support your body, they hold you up. Uh, protection, your cranium protects your brain. Um, your rib cage protects your heart, lungs, and other vital organs. Movement um, is pretty important because your bones serve as levers for your muscles to pull on. Um, if you didn't have bones, your muscles would have nothing to pull on and you'd just be this massless blob like wriggling around. So movement is very important. Your joints, um, which we'll also talk about, are sites of movement at which you can bend and move in lots of different ways. Storage, your bones aren't dead, really, and this is a very common misconception that they're boring, that they're lifeless, that they don't really contain anything. Well, your bones actually store a lot, and they do a lot. So um, the amount of minerals, calcium, phosphates, that make up your bone is actually quite fluid, and your body can deposit more or draw minerals from the bones um, as your body needs it to serve other functions. Growth factors are little proteins that promote the growth of your body, um, and your bones also store those. And lipids, which are basically fats or triglycerides, um, are stored in the bone marrow of a lot of your bones. And lastly, hematopoiesis, or the formation of blood cells, also occurs in the blood marrow of some specific bones. Now we're going to talk about the gross anatomy of a long bone. Um, so gross anatomy, well, what does gross mean? Gross really just means 
on a macroscopic scale, things that we can see with the naked eye in contrast to microscopic. So when we talk about anatomy as being gross, that it's not like, ew, like, that's repulsive, we're just saying things that are large, things that we can see in general. So here is a rough diagram of a long bone. This is actually the humerus, um, which is a long bone here in the upper part of the arm. Um, so you see, you can see on the left here that we're splitting the bone into three major sections. The proximal and distal epiphyses and the diaphysis. So the diaphysis is the middle long shaft part of the bone and it makes up most of the long bone. Whereas the epiphyses are the short, um, kind of more rounded, expanded, ends of the bone. The proximal epiphysis and the distal epiphysis differ in their position relative to the rest of the bone. And if you remember from the lecture on um, directional terms, the proximal epiphysis is going to be closer to the shoulder of the arm, whereas the distal epiphysis would be um, away from the shoulder, away from the attachment point. So there's um, the point where your humerus would attach into the shoulder girdle and there it would articulate with the radius and ulna. In the middle of the um, diaphysis, if we kind of slice off part of the bone to show the interior, um, we have the medullary cavity. Um, so there's actually empty space in the middle of the bone and it's filled with um, yellow bone marrow in the case of the humerus. The medullary cavity is lined by a thin layer of cells called the endosteum. Um, this is in contrast to the outside of the bone, um, which is lined by the periosteum, um, which is the outer covering. And this actually has two layers, the fibrous layer and the osteogenic layer. The fibrous layer is on the outside and it's composed of dense, irregular connective tissue. Whereas the osteogenic layer um, is more thin and delicate and it is composed of osteoblasts and osteoclasts, which we'll talk about later, but basically they just serve to remodel um, the bone layer. The periosteum is attached to the actual bone by Sharpie's fibers, um, also known as perforating fibers, which are just thin collagen fibers um, that serve to attach the two. The periosteum is actually significant because it is the site where tendons and ligaments will attach to the bone. And at those attachment points, the periosteum is going to be particularly thick in order to support that. Next, we have the articular cartilage, which I've shown here in blue. So you can see that that's at both of the epiphyses of the bone. Um, articular cartilage is actually a type of cartilage called hyaline cartilage, which is kind of um, glossy and like it looks like glass that's where the name highline comes from and it will line both ends of the bone where the bone articulates with other bones articulate just means to contact or form a joint so as i said before this articular cartilage is part of the shoulder joint and this is part of the elbow joint um, the reason why your bones have the articular cartilage rather than just having the periosteum interact with other bones is so that this um, kind of serves as a friction minimizer because the cartilage is a whole lot smoother than your bone, which is more rough. Um, this will enable your joints to move really smoothly. So your bone actually is composed of two types of microscopic tissue. You have compact bone and spongy bone. And it's, um, it might be a little bit hard to differentiate between the two on this diagram, but basically compact bone is around the outside of the bone and spongy bone is in the middle. Um, the reason for spongy bone's existence is in part because it lightens up the bone um, so that you're not walking around with big dead weights if all of your bone is really compact. Um, on the other hand, your compact bone is a lot denser, it's a lot tougher and harder to break. Your epiphyseal line divides your bone in between your epiphysis and diaphysis. Um, and in children, it's actually the epiphyseal plate and it's made of cartilage. This is actually the site where your bone lengthens, where your bone grows. When you become an adult, um, your epiphyseal plate does something called ossification. And ossification, that's just the process of cartilage turning into bone. And then once it turns into bone, um, you can no longer grow in that bone anymore. Yellow bone marrow is found in most of the medullary cavities of most long bones and it is mostly composed of fat, which gives it that nice color, and it also stores other nutrients 
um, your body can actually use this fat as an energy source and draw it from your bones. So most long bones, about 90%, have a nutrient artery that penetrates right in the middle of the long bone. And the nutrient artery actually enters through a hole called the nutrient foramina. Foramina is just a really fancy word for saying small hole. So it actually enters through the compact bone to reach the spongy bone and supply blood and nutrients that way. I hope you enjoyed this video lecture on the gross anatomy um, and general structure and function of the skeletal system. Have fun studying and see you next time. Bye! The classic examples of flat bones are the brain the brains. Because it is the site where why can I not think of the word? <laughs> Ligaments and tendons! Okay. Actually where cartilage uh, uh, <laughs> Ew, like that's repulsive.